Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I am going to be doing a no brand tutorial, so I'm not going to show you any of the products that I'm using. I'm going to kind of walk you through what I do, but we're not going to focus on the products at all. So dig into your own collection, find colors that kind of match what I did, and follow along. I'm also going to be answering some random questions, kind of letting you guys get to know me a little bit better. So if you guys are interested in seeing how I got this look and watching the video, then just keep on watching. Okay, so I went ahead and I already primed my eyes because I only own two eye primers and they're different enough that they would have been a dead giveaway, whichever one I use, so I just did it already. So I ended up Googling, I think it was like YouTube get to know me questions. And I found a website that had a couple different like compilation lists of questions. And the first one was really boring. It was like, what's your name? How old are you? Where are you from? Blah, blah, blah. Um, so I ended up going with one that's called the TMI questions because I figured that one would be a little bit more fun. I'm going to skip some obviously because certain things I don't need to talk about here on my channel. But I thought it would be kind of fun to just answer some questions and... They're a lot shorter questions than my Reddit questions video that I did, um, so I'll be able to breeze through a lot of these. I'm going to start off by going in with kind of like a peachy coral shade and using that in my transition. And the first question on the list is, what is your biggest turnoff in a person? I would have to say that my biggest turnoff in a person is probably just somebody who's really fake. Um, I like when people just are true to themselves. And then the next question was, what is my biggest turn on in a person? And I would honestly probably say it would be humor. I love laughing. I love making other people laugh. And like my husband and I laugh and laugh and laugh and laugh. And my best friend and I are the same way. We just laugh constantly. Half of our conversations are made up of just entirely inside jokes that we laugh at that are probably completely stupid to other people. And then I'm going to go in with a slightly, it doesn't look that way on camera, but a slightly more red, a slightly deeper kind of neon ready peach shade and use that on my outer corner and start blending it into the crease. Next question is, are you like your zodiac signs suggest that you should be? Kind of the way that I feel about zodiac signs is I, I think that they're super, super fun. It's kind of almost one of those things that's just like they throw so much information at you in like a, this is how you should be. This is what a Scorpio is like. This is what a Cancer is like. They throw so much information at you just to get something to stick. At a base level, you know, if I take that with a grain of salt, I'm kind of like what a Scorpio would be perceived like I've grown out of a lot of the bad habits that are tied to being Scorpio. I'm not as vindictive as I was when I was a teenager. I'm not jealous anymore, but I am very secretive. I'm very possessive, but in a good way. I love my people and I love my pets and I love like my stuff. And then I'm going to go in with a smaller brush and go into kind of a deeper reddish purple kind of shade and just start deepening up the outer corner. Next question is, at what age did you have your first kiss? And I was 14, almost 15. It was the summer before that school year. I My birthday's in November, so I fell into this weird category where you get approved to start school earlier than everyone else. Like I started school when I was four. I started kindergarten at four and I graduated at 17. So I was always younger than everybody else. Um, I know I turned 13 my freshman year of high school because I remember that was like a whole thing for my mom. She was stressed out because of all that. I grew up too fast all in one moment for her. But yeah, it would have been the summer before my sophomore year was when I had my first kiss. Do you have any tattoos? If yes, what do they mean? Um, I am not going to go through every single tattoo that I have because we would be here all day. If you guys are interested in me doing like a tattoo video, then let me know in the comments down below. I think that that would be super, super fun to do. But 
I have shown my most meaningful tattoo in my answering Reddit questions video, so I will link that in the I in down below. Next up, I'm gonna go in with kind of like a peachy, pinky, gold glitter, liquid glitter. Um, I'm not gonna say what it is, but wow, you guys probably just figured it out. Next question is, do you miss anyone right now? And I mean, I think everybody misses somebody right now. It's it's a really tough time for everybody right now. Um, my best friend, so I live in California. My best friend, her husband and her daughter live in Wisconsin. I definitely miss all of them. And then other than that, I miss my grandma. I haven't gotten to see her in a really long time. I miss all of my husband's family, my husband's friends, they all live in New York. Next up, I'm gonna go in with my little finger and kind of like a, it's like a deeper version of this glitter and just a shimmer formula and I'm just gonna tap that on the outer edge of the glitter just to blend it into the outer corners. Next question is, have you ever dated someone that you met online? And yes, I have. So I was in a really long relationship. I was six years deep with this dude and it was a very, very, very toxic relationship. Not, not a good one to be in. And I eventually came to my senses and I left him, which I had been over him for probably about a year, year and a half before I ended up leaving him. But after that was over, I got on Tinder. And one of the actually, one of the like first people that I matched with, we started talking and this was in November of 2015. And we always kind of kept talking like, oh, we'll hang out, we'll hang out. And he ended up, he lived about 30 minutes away from me without traffic. He ended up moving like an hour away from me without traffic for probably about four or five months. So every time he was like, oh, come hang out with me, come hang out with me. I was like, dude, you're too fucking far. Like you you come to me you're too far and we could just like really never make our schedules work and then six months later so may of 2016 i hit him up one day and i was like what are you doing dude and we started talking again we kind of been talking on and off for like six months but we weren't consistently talking and so we started talking again and he was just like well hey you know i live closer to you now like let's hang out and I was like, cool. I went down there, met him outside of his apartment, which, you know, Tinder Horror Story was probably not my best move. We hung out, you know, watched it. We watched Deadpool and it was a great first date. And then fast forward to two years later, he took me back to the same corner that we met at and he proposed to me. And now another almost two years later, we're still together. So the only person that I have ever met and dated on, met online and then dated is my husband. Okay, so I am gonna hop off really quick and toss on some wings, cause I cannot do that on camera. Clean out my under eyes. And yeah, I'll be right back. Next question is, when was the last time you were insulted? <laughs> and this was a couple days ago, actually. I was at work and a woman came in and she got mad at me for something that she did. She lost something and that was somehow my fault. Like the way I look at it is if, you know, I'm at work and I get powder in my eye. If I'm at work and I do something that affects a customer in a negative way, by all fucking means, be rude to me. But if you do something yourself, you don't get to be rude, rude to me. It, that's, that's not how the world works. 
So she, I, I said to her, I was like, you don't, you don't need to be rude to me over something that isn't my fault. I, I wasn't the one that lost that. So, you know, chill out. I, I had given her options as to what she could do to replace the lost item. Right after I told her that she didn't need to be rude to me, she was like, oh, sweetie, I am so sorry. I will never speak to you like that again. And I was like, that's not any fucking better, bitch. And I just said to her, I was like, that's not any better. And she was like, exactly. So let me talk to you the way that I'm talking to you. And I was like, all right. And so she, she was pissy with me for, you know, a couple more minutes. I finally hit a point where I was like, look, lady, I gave you all of your options. I told you what to do. I told you who to call, resources, all that stuff. And I said, I'm, I'm done. And I just walked away from her. A couple days later, yesterday actually, she comes back into the store. I work with my husband for my parents. So we've now all separately had to deal with this lady because she keeps coming back. And she walks in and she's just like, you know, I just want to apologize to you. I had I had a really hard day that day and I, I took it out on you, this and that. And I was just like, okay, like, that's, that's nice of you to at least acknowledge that, you know, you were having a rough day or whatever. And, and then she continues to go on and say, I just look at you and, and you're, you're so young and, and the guy next to you, which is my husband, is, is you guys are just so young that you guys can't possibly know anything. And I'm just like, I, I've, I've worked for this company for 12, 10, 11, 12 years, something like that now. Like, doesn't matter how young I am or how young I look, I'm the one that's trained to work here, not you. So I'm gonna say that, yeah, I probably know the rules a little bit better than you do. Next question is, what do you think about the most? And I'm a very anxious person. I pretty much constantly deal with anxiety. I am finally starting to go to a therapist and finally starting to get help for it, so that's really exciting. But when you're talking about what do I think about most, it's <laughs> my fucking anxiety. It's all of the things that could possibly go wrong in my life, all of the things that you know could happen, it's the what ifs, it's the stupid shit that I'm thinking about in the moment that makes my anxiety go crazy that I wake up the next morning and I'm like, seriously, bitch, like you, you know that wasn't gonna happen. Next question is, mention something that is currently bothering you. And, it's really fucking putty. But um, we just got new downstairs neighbors. So the ones that we had that were beneath us were silent, it was awesome. And then they moved out and then it was a month of the apartment people renovating, tearing up the whole apartment, putting it all back together. So that was loud. Now we have new downstairs neighbors and they have two dogs and they whine and whine and whine and whine all day long. I think they're sleeping right now, which is good. Kind of makes me scared to like walk around because I don't want to like walk around too hard and wake them up and listen to them whine more. It's just, it, it's annoying in the sense that like sometimes I have to film and I don't want to have to apologize to you guys about, you know, the dogs whining downstairs or the children screaming outside. It's fucking, that's how life is. There's going to be ambient noise in the background. But sometimes when I have to film, I don't want to have my videos filled with dogs whining in the background. It just is what it is. And it also bothers me because it makes me sad because that tells me that those dogs are just left alone in that house all day long. Because why else would they be whining? Unless somebody's home and they've just locked them out of a bedroom, which is also really sad. Um, you know, I understand that people have to work. It just makes me sad. Like, are they whining down there because they have to go potty or something? Like, it just, it, it makes me sad. It bothers me in both the way that it makes me sad and it annoys me. So I am basically just gonna do my under eyes in the reverse order that I did it. So I'm gonna start with that darkest shade and then work back up to the lightest shade and just smoke out my lower lash line. Next question is, mention something that makes you happy. Seeing like all of my cats make me happy, but particularly at this moment, seeing my kitten happy and healthy makes me happy. Um, earlier this week, my husband took him to the vet He's been super sneezy. Apparently it's like a normal thing and kittens just grow out of it, but he had been really sneezy. And so we wanted to just take him to the vet, make sure that he's good. 
And the way that the vet is working right now, at least in California, I'm not sure how it's working everywhere else, but at least in California is you park your car and then you either wait in the parking lot, they come out and they take your animal and then you either wait in the parking lot or like we live literally right down the street from our vet. So we just go home and they call us when it's time to come back, but you're not in there with them. And I am all for vaccines. I 110% vac support vaccines. I need to put that out there right now. But we were like a week or two late on taking Lucas, our kitten, to go get his second set of vaccines. Um, which like, first of all, there's a fucking pandemic happening. So sorry if I'm not rushing to go give my animal to other people. I'm aware that they are doctors and you know they're veterinarians and they're they're sanitizing things and they're keeping things safe. So my husband told me that when he got Lucas back, they kind of berated him for not bringing him soup like sooner, not bringing him on time because it's supposedly super crucial for their development or whatever. Which backtrack, our our second cat, our orange cat, Lily. We got her as a kitten as well, same age that we got Lucas at. I actually think Lily was even a little bit younger and we had less money back then and less resources back then. So if I recall correctly, I think we only got her one set of vaccines and then we just kind of didn't ever again. Our cats are completely indoors. We don't have any dogs in the house. So they, they, they don't interact with other animals who go outside. They just interact with us anyone who may or may not be coming over, but I don't think that my friends have rabies. So it's kind of just one of those things that I've been told by other vets that if you have completely indoor cats, it's not the end all be all to get them vaccines. So anyways, back to Lucas, he got some vaccines and they told us, you know, expect for him to be a little bit lethargic. He's probably gonna be pretty sleepy. He may not eat too much but he'll be okay. He literally, he got back to our house, I wanna say at like three o'clock in the afternoon. I got home, I got off work at seven and after dinner and you know, everything, all that, I was gonna go lay down in bed and watch some TV and I went to go bring Lucas with me. He had barely moved. He was just sleeping constantly. He was, you could arouse him, but like he would literally sit on your lap and be like this. He would barely keep his eyes open. And so I was keeping an eye on him. And the kicker to this whole story is that the following day, I was supposed to start work at 6.30 in the morning. So I'm getting ready to go to bed and I bring Lucas back out to my husband who was in the living room and I said, I'm sure he's okay, but just keep an eye on him. By this time it was like 11 or 12, something like that. So I'm getting ready to go to bed and Lucas throws up. I Google it, which probably, and it wasn't absolutely the right choice for me to Google it, but you know, I am always, hesitant to say that I Google medical issues because you always just get told that you have a brain tumor and you're gonna die in three minutes, but I find out that it is more than likely a cause of anaphylactic shock. So allergic reaction to the vaccine and not a severe allergy because he would have had it right away, but there was definitely some symptoms of him being allergic to the vaccine that he re received. So I, called a 24 hour vet that's nearby us. They were like, yeah, definitely bring him in. So we'd bring him down there, you know, by this time it's, he had thrown up another time before we took him. Um, by this time it's like two in the morning and I'm like, do I even fucking bother sleeping before going to work tomorrow? We take him, we drop him off because we think that it's gonna be a while. And then I get called at probably 3.30 or so. They tell me what's going on, tell me what they're doing. I'm like, go for it, do whatever it is that you need to do. And then I think I get the call probably about four, three, three, like four in the morning to go pick him up. And at this point, my mom usually wakes up very, very early in the morning. So by this time, my mom is already awake for the day, which is great for me because like I said, I work for my mom and I'm talking to her and I'm like, you know, hey, this is kind of what's going on. You know, he's getting treatment. He's going to be okay. But we're, we're being told we need to keep an eye on him for the next 24 to 36 hours just to make sure that as the, he was given Benadryl, um, as the Benadryl wears off that the allergic reaction doesn't come back. So my mom, bless her soul, ended up switching shifts with me so that I 
didn't have to go to work at 6.30 in the morning when it was, I was talking to her at 4.30 in the morning. So yeah, with all that said, the question was, mention something that makes you happy. When we got him back home, um, we both, we were petting him, you know, kind of just making him feel like a little bit more loved because he had, he had a rough little day, that little dude. And he started purring. And that was the first time he had purred since we got him home from the vet the first time. And I was like, okay, you're going to be okay. That's a good sign that you are purring. And then I ended up like, I fell asleep. I woke up at like 8 a.m. because my husband was trying to push me off the bed in his sleep. And I went out to the couch where he was and Lucas came up and laid on my chest and he started biting my nose ring because he's a poop. And it was just really at that moment that I was just like, okay, you're going to be okay. Everything's going to be okay. So something that makes me happy at this moment in time is the fact that my kitten is okay and that he is crazy and rambunctious and a little shit and likes to break things and chew on things and He's the sweetest little boy in the entire world and I love him. Which celebrity would be your hall pass? <laughs> so I ran out of the TMI questions because I, the last like 20 of them were not appropriate for YouTube. I'm back to the regular basic bitch questions. And if you had to change your first name, what would you change it to? And honestly, my first name is not Brie. It's an extension of that name. I don't know of a single person that calls me by my first name. My, my best friend does when she is, when she has an attitude, honestly. She doesn't like a joking manner. Um, I would probably just change my name to just Brie because I, like I said, I don't, nobody calls me by my full name. I don't even honestly know at this point if I would even answer to it because it's, I, it's just not something I'm used to hearing. Where are you from? I am from San Diego, California. I was born in Riverside County, California, and that's where I lived before we moved down to San Diego. Um, what relative was important to you growing up and why? And, you know, I'm this far out of elementary school now, so I feel like I can talk about this story, but my most important relative was definitely my grandma. Um, where we lived in Riverside was not a very good area at all. And my mom didn't want me in that school district, so my mom broke some laws and said that I lived with my grandma. We're not going to talk about it. So she used to drive like 30 minutes every single morning, pick me up from school, go home, pick me up after school, drive me back to my house, and then hang out with me and help me do my homework every night, you know, until my parents got off. So I spent every single day with her. Um, she... My grandma is fucking awesome. I love her so much, but she was definitely really crucial to me growing up. She taught me a lot. She helped me a lot with my schoolwork. I definitely wouldn't have been, I was in like the advanced programs when I was in elementary school and middle school, and I definitely wouldn't have been in those classes without her help. That makes it sound like she like did my homework for me. No, she just taught me a lot. Okay, I am gonna hop off really quick and finish up my face. I can't like do the stuff on my eyes with while talking. So I will be back and I will show you guys the final look. All right guys, so that is going to wrap up today's look. Let me zoom you guys in so you guys can get a closer look. I hope that you guys had fun watching this video. I hope that you guys enjoyed kind of getting to know me a little bit better. I had a lot of fun just kind of doing my makeup without, you know, talking about brands or, you know, products or anything like that. Just doing my makeup, talking to you guys on the camera. So if you guys like this style of video, comment down below. Let me know that you liked it. Give this video a like so that I know that you guys want to see this video more, or this style of video more. Um, like I said, if you guys are interested in kind of a tattoo walkthrough video, let me know that down below as well. With that being said, please subscribe if you have not already. It would mean the world to me. Ring the bell, do all the things. I hope that you guys have an awesome, awesome day, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!